Yes, thanks for the intro. So my name is Nasser Rehal. Uh, I lead the AI Hive, which is uh, professional education uh, in AI at York University. Uh, so we started that last year. Um, prior to this, we started what's called the Blockchain Hub at York as well. So I'm kind of like in both. So I have a lot of my students in these startups and in all the places here now. Um, we have about 5,000 members in blockchain, uh, the Blockchain Hub, and then now we're growing the AI Hive. Uh, we do a lot of certification programs for a lot of um, you know, uh, executives, uh, um, entrepreneurs, and so on. So today, the topic is going to be um, you know, the AI for financial services. Just show of hand, how many of you are kind of like familiar with AI? You know, you've worked in AI projects, so you can start coding? All right, cool. So I'm going to be asking a lot of these like model design questions. Okay, so who's from fintech? Like who's from the financial, like, you know, working on financial services products? Anybody from core fintech, like from a bank or insurance company or it's purely startups? Okay, so we're all kind of interested to know kind of what sort of use cases, what, where the market is and so on. So that's, that's cool. So I'm going to do some level setting. Um, and I'm probably going to be faced with the same pro pro problem that Hunter had. So um, <clears throat> we always hear all, you know, everything about the fourth industrial revolution, about um, you know, um, where things are, transformation, and so on. Uh, so I'm going to quickly put this thing together, saying, OK, there's a lot of transformation projects happening everywhere. Uh, you know, for us here as, you know, in a startup, we always try to see you know, how we can stretch a limit and bring things to the table, like new innovation and so on. And as a matter of fact, it's just like we actually have to deal with the incumbents. There's a lot of financial services industries, you know, very much, you know, maturing for hundreds of years, for, you know, 100 year plus. They're still running on all outdated systems and so on. So when we think about, you know, bringing a fintech project to the, to the marketplace, we have to take into consideration what is out there today. Um, everybody in, in the financial service industry is talking about transformation. So we have to align whatever AI use cases or projects or, or programs we build um, along those lines. Um, so, you know, when we talk about AI in general, so uh, I just always try to put this kind of slide together to say, okay, where, you know, how we, how we, get, we actually got here. So, you know, we got progress of all technologies, all, you know, through, through, you know, uh, with time. And then now um, we have all these disruptive technologies that are in, under our disposal to start building new systems and new tools and new innovations and so on. Um, and then, um, as you see, there's a lot of uh, uh, all these elements to the right. Um, it's gone. So I'm going to focus on the AI aspect of it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, some challenge with this one. So we're going to fix the RF uh, problem first before we fix the AI problem. All right, so uh, just to put a context, when we talk about AI, um, actually we're talking about so many things. Uh, AI in general, because it, it's like basically, you know, you know it, 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 it includes a lot of, um, you know, paradigms, a lot of technology, a lot of, you know, philosophical things. But AI is basically uh, kind of the general domain. And then the innovation is actually happening in what's called machine learning and in deep learning. So this is, this is where the new use cases that make sense in terms of prediction, in terms of using data to, to predict things. Um, so whenever you talk about AI, can, we have to frame that into our mind to say, okay, are we talking about the general AI, which is uh, basically like either robotics or kind of linear uh, algorithms or whatnot, or we are actually getting into the ability to learn, into as you know, it's called unsupervised learning, supervised learning, so on, or maybe more to deep learning. So these are the things that you need to think about when we talk, when we talk about AI. You know, this is not just for financial service, for, but for every industry. These are the kind of the categorization. Um, so, keep going quickly here. Um, you know, we had we had some uh, some attempts to AI. Uh, you know, as we progress throughout the years, from the 60s until present. You know, we started with mainframes, which had some sort of automation that was called AI at the time. We moved towards kind of semiconductors. You know, things got powerful, big data, cloud, and now we have all IoT data that we can actually leverage from our you know smartphones, uh, sensors, and so on. Uh, one more. 
And AI kind of had a little bit of run in, in, in um, you know, if you look at, at the progression, you know, AI, you know, maturity level, we start with, you know, what was called science fiction, you know, all these programs and so on. So science fiction started, and then all of a sudden now we start imagining use cases that we can implement, especially that we have mainframes and then that, you know, we have, you know, kind of PC computing. We started to look at, you know, the spring of AI. And then all of a sudden now, because the technology could not scale enough, now we get into a winter. Uh, so as you see, this is kind of, we're progressing through some sort of cycles in terms of adoption. And I think now we're into an, uh, you know, a very healthy spring where we have a lot of investments, we have a lot of technical innovations and so on. So I think we are in, a, in, a, in, a, in the right mindset now. So why is it different now? Why we are in, 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 a, in a sort of a um, you know, spring, summer type harvest? Well, we have technology advancements. So we have the GPUs, we have uh, cloud services, we have investments, we have the uh, maturing infrastructure, um, we have talent, uh, we have, you know, uh, with all these programs that you see governments are, are, are putting forward, um, and we have leadership and investment. So we have a lot of, you know, ecosystems trying to nourish this use case because we know the potential. Um, so how would this Im impact the financial industry? Um, so AI will provide them with the tooling for what's called new business models. Now I know, you know we talk about you know, like peer-to-peer -peer payments, we talk about you know, new like innovative science fiction things in FinTech, but at the end of the day, we're actually trying to um, enhance the existing services that you know, the financial institutions can provide in terms of either banking or insurance or whatever, but now we can actually give them tools to provide new business models. You know, maybe you know we have you know fintechs can do the banks functions, but in a more efficient efficient way. It's basically so we still do. We're still moving money, moving money in a frictionless way, but still we're moving money. So, but now we have business models that we can build around this. Uh, so, so now you know all all that we need to think about when we talk start talking about adoption of AI and fintech, we have to start thinking about the next generation business models. Um, so, so the way you can frame this, we can frame it on actually multiple levels. So we can start thinking, up, thinking about assets. So we talk, talk about asset management. We talk about you know, whatever these banks or these fintechs are holding. So it's moving from the scale of assets to more of a scale of data. So the more data that you have, um, then the more functionalities, the more innovations you can provide in this space. Um, we're moving from a mass production, meaning you know, all the functions will be in you know, banks or major fintechs or major like insurances and so on, to more of tailored experiences. Now, if you, for example, one of the innovations happening in peer-to-peer -peer payments is basically with a money transfer, you could, let's say, you know, sitting on, you know, for lunch with the group, you could just do the splitting of a bill right there. This is called tailored experience. You're still moving money, but you could do it real time. There's more data that's flowing with the payment, so that's experience. There's uh, exclusivity of relationship was before because, you know, for example, you know, for you to do a major transaction with a bank, you have to be on their, you know, approval, approval vendor list and so on. But now with micro lending and so on, you can move more to optimizing, optimization and matching. So you could do micro transaction, micro matching, micro lending and so on. And then, you know, um, before, you know, we used to be the model would be high switching costs. Say if you commit to one of the, 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 the financial institutions, then, you know, you have to do a lot of due diligence before you sign up. Because why? Because you think if I move, then it's going to be a lot of costs associated with it. Now we have high retention benefit, meaning, um, you know, um, you know it's, it's not about the cost for people to be. I want to offer them incentives to stay with me. So now you, it's, it's, the equation has been reversed. So these are the kind of the main criteria. One more, which is rely on human ingenuity to more of augmented performance, meaning you know, we let algorithm work for us. Um, and then it's just a number game, becomes a number game. So these are kind of like the, the major points when you start talking about, uh, I think we moved before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's fine. So. Um, so anyway, so these are the, the major elements um, that we think about when we start talking about the new, new business models. Um, and if you want to develop a new application, if you want to go talk to a fintech, they want to partner with them, you have to talk along these lines. Um, so, um, okay, it's going. So basically we're still talking about the transformation. So from a, uh, from a transformation perspective, uh, if you guys are developing uh, applications or you want to engage with a financial institution, 
basically, we have to think about three major themes. We have to start thinking about what are the applications that you're going to be building to make the front end, the back end operations radically different from the way they are today. And the second one is how are we going to create the major shift from a, from a structure and regulation, meaning you know, there are a lot of regulations putting, you know, the, the governments and the organizations are putting out there. How do you leverage those to, to launch new services? And the third one is how to raise the critical challenge for society to resolve in terms of privacy, in terms of uh, data governance, in terms of, of uh, security, and so on. So these are the three major themes. And then if we can go on to the next slide, I can kind of highlight each theme what are the things that are relevant from a, from a financial perspective per theme? So when we talk about the, the front end and back end operations in the banks or financial institutions, we start talking about, you know, we need to move the cost center to a profit center. Meaning, you know, the banks, for example, today have a lot of uh, cost centers in, in, in embedded in the banks and financial institutions. Then there are a lot of innovations happening to make sure those applications are, for example, cross-shared across the fintechs. They can actually you know, sell them to fintechs. Um, there is loyalty, a lot of loyalty programs that you know, we can innovate uh, in, in a financial industry. Um, you know, you know, I'm sure you know, for, for every banking uh, app that you see out there, there's like the first one is, is, uh, is points, you know, how you could you know, get this card, get those points. So these are the innovations happening. And actually, like, all the, 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 the AI, uh, in, in fintech is happening, trying to, to identify those micro niches so that you can actually grab as many customers as you can in those areas. Um, and we started driving finance and others, so we'll, we'll kind of skip at those. So next one is, you're moving too fast. <laughs> All right, so theme two, which is um, from a regulator, regulatory perspective, um, the markets have been segmented and resegmented and micro-segmented, meaning you know the, the governments and, and um, um, you know regulatory bodies are making the the, the, the the market so segmented that you can actually focus on on individual segments and then launch and target those areas. You need some sort of intelligence and real-time intelligence, real-time data flow to uh, to actually address those micro micro segments. If you if you have let's say two three segments of the market you want to address, you know you want to manufacture what's called manufacture products to them. Then you know if you do it the traditional way, you know you have three or four. Then you could put the admin overhead. But if you, let's say you have 100 and 200 and 300 micro segments, you need to have some sort of algorithm, an agent that will actually self run and and and, and self adjust. Um, there is also the data alliances, um, and I'm sure you know you've, you you are aware that you know our data has been you know shared and reshared and and monetized across the spectrum. Um, so this is creating a lot of um, you know, opportunities and threats in terms of security and, and, and privacy, but there's still a lot of, a lot of monetization that's happening in, in those areas. Um, and there's a the power of data regulators, meaning, you know, the government are trying to do what's called, you know, uh, innovation by, um, by regulation, meaning, you know, let's say they try to enforce open data, for example. Um, with open data, now we have access to data, now we can innovate, but there's a limit. So, so that's something that we can, you know, we can... Um, we can at least take into consideration when we start thinking about the structural, uh, the structure of regulation. And the third one is, um, you know, um, is again the security and, and privacy. So we have to, you know, with that, even though you know it's kind of scary thing, but there's a lot of innovation, a lot of startups uh, trying to address, trying to focus their product on to this category here. Meaning, you know, I'm just going to launch a product that is, you know, GDPR compliant, or uh, I'm going to allow the users to monetize their, their their data. So, you know, instead of me sharing data, I pay you for for the data that I sh that, that you share with me, and so on. So, this is another venue of of um, of innovation happening in the financial industry. Um, so, so this is kind of a very high level. What about the practicality? What's the practical terms of this? So. So let's start, you know, before we get deep, uh, you know, get some sort of a uh, focus on the financial industry, I want to give you an idea on the spending or the market size um, across all, all verticals. So you could see, you know, um, like from advanced electronics to uh, banking and so on. So this is basically, uh, you know, uh, addressing the whole spectrum of AI. Um, so this is basically across all the industries, as you could see, um, the major, the big ones are uh, semiconductors, banking, um, consumer packaged goods, insurance, 
uh, public sectors retail. So these are like the major, uh, based on research, based, based on McKinsey analysis. Um, so these are the major um, you know, target for AI uh, revenue. And you can see the, the, the market is about nine to $16 trillion a year. Um, so this is not just AI, just to be mindful, this is AI plus analytics. So we have the traditional AI plus the deep learning and, and machine learning. So we, we kind of split them in a, in a second. Um, so if we focus on the financial uh, use cases, um, so we look at insurance and banking, one more. And you can see now for these two, uh, for the financial services, we're, lock, we're looking about 1 trillion to 15 trillion for banking and about 1 trillion to 24, uh, 1 trillion and so on for, for insurance. And then these blue lines will tell you, okay, these are the traditional uh, AI, meaning the spending expected for or forecasted for traditional, uh, traditional AI, like big data, analytics, and so on. And um, I would say like, you know, a third of, of, the, of, the, of the split would be for deep AI, like for the new innovation of AI, which is still a significant market, to be honest. So this is, this is where the focus needs to be. Uh, so when we talk about, okay, so now we can uh, start thinking about, okay, so when we talk about f uh, fintech, f AI use cases, what are they? Uh, so basically we're looking at four major or five major points. Uh, the first one is focus on compliance uh, and fraud detection. So we're looking at things about like credit card, uh, account fraud, anti-money laundering, uh, investigation, optimization, we have sales practices, sales transactions, compliance and regulatory, regulatory mapping. So this is a major, major component of, of use cases or major bucket of use cases in, in, the, in, the, in the fin uh, financial uh, area. Uh, and again, these are the things that the banks are focusing on. So if you wanna be launching a product in collaboration with banks or financial institutions, if they align, then you have cooperation with the banks. Now, if you can provide a better solution, then you actually can be a FinTech. So basically either you are a financial, like you're working with the traditional financial guys or you're actually a FinTech. The second one is document processing. Um, so this is basically the banks have you know, tried to do this you know, for all along to digitize um, banks and uh, to digitize um, uh, the statements and so on. But this is beyond this. This is more for, let's say, um, um, uh, funds, like you know, fund and, and, and fund accounting. You know, there's a huge process that happens from a compliance perspective for you, let's say, to, to buy uh, you know, um, uh, like a, a, paper, a commercial paper, for example. So these are things that can be document, uh, digitized and, and, and using AI is, um, is, a, is, a, is a very widely um, targeted. The, second, the third one is pricing and product rec recommendation, and this is huge. Um, this is um, basically talking about the micro-segmentation. So instead of having you know, one or two or three segments, now you can have micro segments that you can actually uh, you know, attack. Um, the third one is trading. So I think this is obvious, we all know about this. Is, this is very kind of you know, known that you know, there's the bots, you know, we talked about you know, um, bot-based training, but now there's a lot of things that could do on the arbitrage, on the market making and the market taking and so on. And the third one, the, the last one is the customer experience. Um, so that ranges from the, you know, all the way from contact center to the engagement that these people can have with, with their customers. And if you can produce any, any tool or any uh, app or any uh, you know, uh, utility that can help the banks or, finance or insurance companies to, uh, to a lot of those lines, you know, I think there will be an alignment. Okay, so, uh, so when, we, when we start to um, you know, say, okay, how do we actually successfully implement an AI solution in a, in a financial industry? So we have to look at uh, how to dem democratize AI responsibly. Uh, we need to make sure how you ma we maximize the scarce expert productivity, meaning you, know, you have one or two data scientists, how you can scale them across all the projects happening. Um, and uh, we, had, we have to think about the models, how to maintain the models and so on. Uh, we have to make sure we have an infrastructure that can support us. We have to you know, see how we can leverage, leverage the cloud from a latency and scalability and so on. Um, and uh, you know, machine learning and deep learning takes time. So we have to make sure we have that you know, kind of account in terms of our forecast and so on. Um, so production is, is hard. So even though you sometimes things look, uh, things look good on, on papers and uh, they do prototyping and, and so on, this is production is, is very, 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 very hard, especially when you have 
you know, models that get trained with data, but then the data keeps changing, and then you have to keep, you know, you keep pumping data and so on. Um, you have to do continuous monitoring. You have to do, uh, you know, a lot of machine learning models retrofit and, and deployments. Um, high parameter training, meaning, you know, the model can work today. You know, how would it work tomorrow? Uh, GPU optimization, if, especially if you're not working on the cloud, you know, how do you actually, you know, make that happen? If, if it's on the cloud, then, you know, sometimes multi-cloud, you know, banks or, or fintechs, they might have, you know, multi-cloud, especially if they're global. How do you do that? And then how do we make AI, you know, operate on a self-serve model? Meaning, you know, the scientists, once they are out of the equation, how would the users and the business operate the AI algorithm um, kind of on a self-serve? Um, so this is kind of high level. Um, when we talk about, about um, uh, deployment or about implementation of AI in either a financial institution or in a fintech, what are the things we look for? We look for basically we're going to have some sort of AI governance um, that will help us build, op build and optimize and prototype and deploy. And with that, for example, we talk about you know, optimizing scale, we have to look at, start looking about how do we build models and optimize them, how do we, um, uh, where do we get the data, how do we massage the data, how do we define our um, hyper parameters and so on. And when we talk about de deployment, we talk about you know, how do we do logging, versioning, productivity, monitoring, all of those sort of things. And then you know, beneath this, you have to start thinking about how you actually deploy it. Is it gonna be cloud, is it gonna be on-prem? Uh, are we going to include what, what AI services you're going to expose to the external, the external community and so on? What sort of platforms are you going to use, engines, and the infrastructure? And then all of that kind of going to be wrapped within the organization's overall enterprise architecture. Um, so again, so this, is, this blueprint works two ways. So if you are a fintech, then you have to know and you eventually want to integrate with a, with, a, with a financial institution, then you have to know kind of the architecture. If you're, a, if you're dealing with, with, with financial institutions, then you have to fit in one of those areas. For example, if you provide data, then you have to be at the top level where you, know, you have to know how to pump data, what's the data, data governance is, how to you know, you know, connect to them, what sort of uh, SLAs they have, and so on. All right. Um, so last, last point is, um, you know, we talked about technology, we talked about business models, now we're talking about the people. Um, so one more, please. So basically what is involved in terms of people, we have uh, the, the, the scientists or data scientists or engineers, we have the analysts from a business that will map on a business and technology. We have the, uh, the, the machine learning people, we have the integrators and architects. And these are all important through the life cycle of, of AI deployment at, at a financial institution. Um, so for example, scientists, they're used to solving problems like theoretical, uh, all the way to deployment and maintaining the, the, the systems. Uh, I think there's a huge opportunity for transformation in the financial services using AI. Um, so let's go create amazing things and increase efficiency and, and empower customers and you know, entrepreneurs to come up with new ideas. Yeah, that's it for me, thank you.